Hello, my friends. Welcome to part two of the stakeholder register. So now that we've got our stakeholder register with all the names, positions, and so on, another question that comes up is, okay, how can I take this to the next level and make it even smarter? So to make this smarter, we're going to go ahead and we're going to save as something new and we'll say enhanced stakeholder register. Example. Okay, it's a stakeholder register slash plan example. Okay, so let's go ahead and save it. All right, so what we're going to do right now is include some additional information. So in the last video, we talked about how to set this up. To make this even more effective, you can go ahead and attach various documents. As you can see here on the right as well, we have the option of uh, attachments. So what I'm going to do here is attach some documents to give you an idea of how useful this could be to you in the real world. You know, stakeholders often have uh, a lot of content to review, a lot of stuff that surrounds them. So if that were the case and you have a particular stakeholder like TPC Limited, for example, on row one, and there's a lot of background information about this stakeholder. Well, we could just attach it right here in Smartsheet by first of all, clicking on this attach icon and just click on attach files to sheet. You could upload a file from your computer or from any of these other sources. I'm just going to upload from my computer. And I'm going to choose this uh, backpacks WBS PDF. And there it is, it's attached. So if I move away from, from this, you can see that the row, the specific row in question, right, does not have, this row three does not have anything, but if I click on row one TPC and I uh, refresh, you can see that that one is there. And I could have further actions to download the file. I could send the file to someone if I wanted to, I could rename it. And there's a whole lot of stuff I could do. You could actually use the concept of proofing as well. That will be for another video, but you can use proofs and you can carry out certain actions regarding proofs that you need stakeholders to read, be aware of, look at, and you could actually involve them. To make this even more interactive, you could have, instead of just the name, you could have a contact list and who you want to uh, put in there, you could have a variety of actions that are carried out because you got the names there. In fact, the moment you put them in the sheet, it could actually notify them. You are now a stakeholder on whatever project. But that is just one piece of it. Next piece is here where we have power interest. Like I said, we could change the sheet to just be text or number. And we could have on a scale of one to five, we could have their power. We could also have their interest on a scale of one to five. And we could just have numbers like that. And let's insert a column. And here we're going to have the stakeholder score. And the stakeholder score is going to take the multiplier of this times this. And based on that, we have a stakeholder score from one to 25. This is gonna help us to further prioritize our stakeholders. So as you score the stakeholders there, you can see a stakeholder with a score of a 20, that stakeholder is definitely gonna be in the red zone, okay? To give you a, a reminder of how this works, in the world of stakeholder section on the exam, Remember we have the power and we have the interest of stakeholders, right? Now, if you were to take the stakeholders who are in the bottom
you could say those stakeholders of a low level of power, low level of interest, okay? Then you've got stakeholders that have a high level of power, but a low level of interest, okay? And then we have those stakeholders who are in the red zone. I call them the red zone. These stakeholders have a high level of power and a high level of interest. And last but not least, we have those stakeholders who have a high degree of interest. So we put them over here, they have a low level of power. See, so this is called the power interest grid. Okay, power interest grid. And here you got to remember that this is low power low interest. These ones, you got to have that strategy of monitor. You just got to monitor them, monitor. These stakeholders have a high level of power, a low level of interest. These stakeholders, you want to keep satisfied. These stakeholders here have a high level of power and a high level of interest. And these, you want to manage close. It's be like white on rice, know where they are, what they want, very close. And last but not least, we have the eager beavers. They have a low level of power and a high level of interest. And these, you want to keep informed. These are the people who show up to the meeting before you. They want every report of the project. Even though they have a low level of power, they're very interested in the project. And we call this a power interest grid. All right, so we're gonna take these concepts of the power interest grid, and we are going to put that into our stakeholder sheet. All right, so with that in mind, we are going to put this configuration into our sheet. So let's go over to our enhanced sheet, okay? And we are going to put the score in there with that same uh, color scheme, okay? So as far as the score is concerned, we can uh, do some uh, conditional formatting and we can add a new rule and we can say, if the stakeholder score is stakeholder score is between a one and I'm just choosing numbers arbitrarily a one and a five. Okay. Uh, we could say apply this format of of a green. See, uh, but we don't want it for the entire row. We only want it for the stakeholder score. And let me do that again. I might have botched that. Let's do the properties or the conditional formatting again. So. Not for the entire row, just for that. Okay, there we go. All right, then we could just take this and duplicate it. We can clone the rule. And this time, if it's between a six and let's say a, a 10 or 12, and the format is gonna be uh, yellow. And you get the idea. And we can keep making our way through it with the conditional format. Let's clone the rule again. Format's gonna be orange and the score is gonna be between a 13 and a 20, 
and one more clone. The format's going to be a red. And it's when it's between a 21 and a 25. These are just random. You can make up your own. Okay. So to make it more, uh, more fun, let me actually just adjust that a little bit. I'm going to make this uh, between an 18 and a 25. And this one, a 13 and a 17, just so that we, we've, we can see the effect of what we've done. All right. And there you have it. So some of the colors don't show. Uh, but as far as making sense of the power interest, and being able to see if a stakeholder is in the red zone, like this one is in the red zone, right? So anyone that's over an 18, that's really important. Let's put this five in here, see what happens. That one turns to orange. And you have an indicator that just helps you, all right? And that is all I wanted to show you. You can make it more smart, more intelligent. You can keep putting information there and letting the information help you automate stuff. Last but not least, we are going to add to this row. We're going to add an attachment and we're going to add an attachment of our power interest grid format. So let's go ahead and do that. So right here in our stakeholder matrix sheet, I'm gonna click on that. It's gonna attach the stakeholder matrix image. And that's a stakeholder matrix, and it's attached to that row. All right. And that's it, my friends. I hope this gave you some ideas about how you can use Smartsheet. It's like Excel on steroids. It can really be helpful in getting all the data in one place, one format. So imagine if you had 20 different projects, you could use this one sheet format for all your 20 projects. And if you needed to suck in a report that had all the stakeholder information across, across 20 projects in one place, Smartsheet will enable you to do that. So yeah, that's why it's a, it's a really helpful project management tool for PMs who are pulling their hair out, not knowing how to navigate stuff, not knowing how to do stuff. I'm telling you, Smartsheet, it can solve a lot of your problems. If you haven't watched the first video where I actually set this sheet up, you might want to go do that. Remember, you can format anything here to your heart's content. All right, my friends, I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.